Hello Masoka Universe. Yes, the international break is coming up and so it's time to make a really good look in the 15 top leagues plus a few leagues where we have teams in the Champions League as I said and I add actually three little more competitions, more international ones at the end. Um, but before we go on a deep dive and this video might take a while and I hope I can make it through in one uh, sitting. I don't want to complain all the time that I'm tired but I have to say this weekend was really tough and I had a long day at work but I still want to get this done because it's I have two more videos before the international break actually starts that I really want to get out and maybe I want to review some uh, jerseys as well so let's see where it goes. Uh, I know I promised a, la, a league uh, jersey review, I promised an Europa League jersey review. I think at this moment uh, an Europa League jersey review is, m is more pressing. I will do my very best during the international break to prepare that one. I will promise a league. Uh, I saw a lot of special jerseys released all over Europe, um, especially for the big four leagues that I already have reviewed. So, yes. I know they should be coming. I really want to do them. The, it, I literally don't have the time at the moment. I have quite some stuff at work to do and you know family. Also quite busy there. I'm always squeezing in a few things and uh, most often in my free time I'm watching soccer. I need a 30 day day. That's a 30 hour day to be honest. Uh, yep. But yeah, enough of me complaining. This is not a, this is not a complaint. It's a good problem to have that you are full with ideas. I just know I need to get to it. Um, so how am I going to do this now? We're going to go through leagues again in the order. I went today again through the current standing in the rankings. And this playing here. Um, yeah, Italy and Germany are not that close anymore. Now Germany is a pretty clear third place. And yeah, and the rest, I hope that uh, Austria can catch Turkey. In the five-year ranking, it will not happen, I'm afraid. Uh, but I will go through leagues. I show the results from uh, last weekend, as I usually do, with some comments. Then we look at the standings. And for the top leagues up until Austria, and I don't have the numbers for Ukraine, unfortunately. I'll also show you what 538 is saying. Um, what are the chances of teams finishing? Uh, as champions, making a Champions League and all those kind of, kind of things. So should be a packed video. I will be a good video. I hope will be informative. Uh, you will get tomorrow, I'll start with the international break, I actually will give you my first thoughts on the leaked and already released jerseys, not with ratings yet, but just giving you my general thoughts on it, because today I saw a certain jersey and I just fell off my stool. Uh, you get a what to watch for during the national break, what are the uh, teams to watch, and my nose is again uh, bugging me. And yeah, and then you'll get my daily updates on what I've been watching and where I think things are going. So, full program. And once the international break is over, I do my very best to get an Europa League jersey review out and then maybe after that we'll look at Liga and let's see where it's going. It's all up here, just needs to get done. Okay, first league that we we'll look at is La Liga. As I said, I didn't see much of La Liga this weekend. Uh, we had Real Sociedad dropping points to Leganes 1-1. Alaves, Real Valladolid 3-0. Valencia beating Granada 2-0. I have a really a feeling that it, it's Granada's time is the early days are over now. I think they will probably fall, uh, regress a little bit to, to the mean, um, which is on one side a pity, on the other side, you know, um, it's, you didn't really expect more. I do, do, do not expect them to be in any uh, relegation danger. Uh, Real Madrid beats Eva 4-0, uh, Barcelona, the Messi show 4-1 against Celta Vigo, and then on Sunday, Real Mallorca, Villarreal 3-1, that's a uh, a little bit of Stana, Athletic Club, it's also a so-and-so team, a little bit of Valencia, 2-1 over Levante, Atletico Madrid gets a win again, 3-1 over Espanyol, Getafe also soon as saw a tad bit of that, 0-0, and then Seville Derby ends 2-1 for Sevilla. This means now in the standing, it's almost, if you wanted to predict a final standing, this is probably as close as you will get Barcelona Real Madrid with a game less, 
and I said it last week and then they, uh, or two weeks ago, uh, you know, one and a half week, weeks ago, the two of them with 25 points, a point ahead of the competition and they have one game less. Again, I think it's a pretty strong position for those two. Yes, it's the classical that's missing, uh, which could mean more distance for Barcelona or Real Madrid. I have to say both teams are not convincing at the moment, but neither is anyone else in La Liga. I would say even if both of them just have an average crisis-laden season, they will finish probably in the top three. Uh, the league on the bottom I don't find as convincing. Atletico Madrid, 24 points, and Sevilla, 24 points, and Real Sociedad, 23 points. And I'm sorry, Real Sociedad, everyone's saying they are so fun to watch. Maybe they are, but they're not getting the results that they need. So uh, that's a little bit of downer. Atletico Club is uh, with 20, uh, and then Getafe, 20, as is Granada and Valencia. So you need to see Granada is actually, they were top of the table not too long ago, and now they are falling. Um, with having not have that uh, great string of results. And Valencia is in touch with the top of the table. I think this is more or less where I would make cut teams that I think that can play up there. Uh, Osasuna is also a pretty good promoted team. Villarreal 18, Levante 17, Real Madrid 17, Alaves 15, as is A bar. And we're going to the relegation zone, but actually the drop off is really after Real Betis with 13, because uh, Celta, Espanyol, Le Leganes are at least four points off the pace so uh, it really looks like it's those three teams let's look at the chances as you can see it's an open title race between uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid 43% to win the Liga for Barcelona 41% for Real Madrid and both more than 90% to qualify the Champions League I think we don't need to discuss it it's between the two giants um, Barcelona given a slight edge although Real Madrid has slightly better rating but I think they are pretty even uh, this season. The Clásico is really a match that I'm looking forward to, although I think it will end in a draw. Atletico Madrid has small chance of making a title at 10%, Sevilla 4%, Rasmus at 1%, everyone else is not given a chance by 5-38. Uh, but uh, Champions League spots uh, realistically, I think you have to have a, more than 10%, so it's Getafe, Valencia, Real Sociedad, Sevilla uh, are also in there. If we now look for relegation, I mean, as, as you can see, that the league is kind of tightish so it goes almost up until Valencia there to have a chance of being relegated but we had to really get serious I would say is there a bet is with 24% Alaves 25% Espanol 36% it still says uh, Mallorca Celta and Leganes is in real real trouble at the moment 67% chance of being relegated let's move further to the Premier League um, the Friday game between Watford and Norwich City uh, ended with a 2-0 win for Watford, so uh, they finally get a win in Norwich. Yes, they had the win against City, but since then it's down, down, down. Uh, Chelsea gets a win over Crystal Palace, 2-0, continue their really good form. Burnley, 3-0 over West Ham, Newcastle, 2-1 over Bournemouth. I actually wish I would have seen more uh, Premier League highlights. I recorded them, I never got to watch them. Uh, Southampton uh, is in bad shape, I uh, have to say. I'm not sure if the coach has not will make it. Loses 2-1 at home to Everton. Spurs, uh, Sheffield United 1-1. One, one. I mean, what's happening to Spurs and how good is Sheffield, by the way? Leicester, quite convincing performance, 2-0 over Arsenal. United gets another win, 3-1 over Brighton. Wolves, uh, we talked about that, 2-1 over Aston Villa. And Liverpool completely dominated. Uh, nah, I don't want to say completely dominated. It was very clinically in the win over Manchester City. And I still don't get... The handball ruling on the first goal, but it was not to my detriment. I actually wanted Liverpool to win that one. So in the table, Liverpool is now leading, and it's not Manchester City that second. It's Leicester City and Chelsea that are eight points behind Liverpool. It really looks like, even though 12 games only, the season is 38 games. So, you know, we are a little bit past the quarter pole, getting to the third pole. Uh... There's still a lot of games to be played, but eight point lead, nine over the probably the most serious contender with Manchester City. That's a pretty big cushion. Leicester City, though, um, I think we have to get acquainted with the fact that they will finish top four, maybe. It also means that I should get a Leicester jersey at some point, which I wanted to have for a long time anyway. Chelsea, also 26. Um, I really like this Chelsea team. 
I really like uh, what they're doing there. So I think Leicester and Chelsea are my uh, positive surprise, and there's Manchester City, another big positive surprise. I mean, those four really seem to be the top four teams at the moment. Then drop off. Sheffield United is sensational. Arsenal just there. Manchester United is there. Wolves made their way up. I mean, they are finding the form. Uh, Bournemouth, uh, Burnley, Brighton, Crystal Palace and Newcastle are the midfield and then Spurs really, really, really far down. Should have changed there. Yeah. Uh, Newcastle is now above Spurs. Everton 14, Western 13, Aston Villa 11. You know, it's similar to Spain. The drop of his what for Southampton, Norwich. Those are the three worst teams at the moment, but it can... I don't think that Everton, West Ham and Aston Villa are that safe. I don't even think Newcastle. I think Spurs will not uh, get into relegation troubles. If we look now in the standings, and you can see already, um, the chances for winning the league, Liverpool now two-thirds chance, Manchester City 29%, and there's Chelsea and Leicester slightly in there. But if you look at the bars in the uh, middle, it's pretty clear that um, Chelsea and Leicester are more for three and four and not for one and two. Uh, all those four are favored to make for the Champions League. And then Spurs is still a spot on favorite to make it into fifth place. I don't see it quite happening. Then United over Arsenal. So you see uh, 538 rankings um, predict a much more... Uh, a scenario that we would see. However, now if you see uh, Everton still holds a good rating, as does Wolves, Bournemouth and Sheffield United, actually does have a uh, good standing because they had a good start of the season. If you look now at the bottom, who is 20% of above? It's Newcastle, West Ham, Aston Villa, Watford, Southampton, Norwich, the teams that we've talked about, with Norwich being the prime contender for being relegated, which I think they won uh, League One. It's a little bit sorry that they will uh, probably fall because they're actually playing quite attractive but it's probably a little bit too naive. We go to the Bundesliga where Hoffenheim beat Köln 2-1 away from home. Union Berlin gets another win, 3-2 uh, at Mainz but given that Mainz just lost to Leipzig 8-0, not uh, too crazy. Schalke had a 3-3 oh, draw, I think they led three times and had to uh, give up that lead. That really hurt their chances. Leipzig wins 4-2 at Hertha. Augsburg 1-0 at Paderborn and Dortmund annihilated, uh, annihilated by Bayern Munich. Then the Sunday games, uh, Gladbach 3-1 over Werder Bremen didn't see much. Uh, Leverkusen wins at Wolfsburg, so Wolfsburg also, they are finally playing better, better teams and that means they are regressing to the mean. A little bit sorry to see that because, you know, the coach of Wolfsburg is the former Lusk coach and there are a few Lusk, former Lusk players in there. But yeah, they're not playing that often. And Freiburg wins 1-0 over Frankfurt, where the scandal was seen in the end came that Abraham, the captain of Frankfurt, basically tackled the coach of Freiburg and probably seeing um, is in danger of missing for the rest of the year. But let's see where this is going. In the league table now, Gladbach clear four points now. Uh, had three points last weekend. Uh, Leipzig, Bayern and Freiburg are level on points. So Bayern we would expect in there, Freiburg and Leipzig not really. And then Hoffenheim is now in there. We haven't talked much about Hoffenheim so far. And Dortmund only 19, as is Schalke only 19, and Leverkusen 18. Um, I'm drawing the line at Leverkusen. I, I continue. I don't believe in Frankfurt. They are too much up and down. Uh, same thing Wolfsburg. They are 17 points, but they have heavy even chance. Then there's really the cutoff. Um, Union, Hertha, Düsseldorf, Werder Bremen, Augsburg, those are all more relegation threatened than anything else. Mainz with nine, but it feels like the Köln and Paderborn will be the teams that actually get relegated. Uh, but who knows what will happen. Let's see what 538 is saying. I mean, Bayern Munich will win the league after that performance of what Dortmund is. Leipzig makes a big surge, 14%. Maybe Leipzig can do something. I just think that squad is too inexperienced. Dortmund 7% uh, to win the league and Gladbach 5%. So even with this huge lead, Gladbach is not very much favored by 538. Um, for the Champions League, it's those four. And then we can also say Leverkusen, Hoffenheim, Eintracht, Schalke. Maybe. Let's see. But the relegation is where it's really interesting. We see Paderborn is seen as a certainty. Köln has a substantial chance of being relegated. 
uh, Augsburg mines are in danger. Um, Union Berlin, surprisingly not. In Serie A, we had actually quite some big results, I have to say. Uh, quite some surprising results. Uh, also, to say, Serie A is a two-team league at the moment, and we'll see where they go. Sassuolo beats Bologna 3-1, so uh, kind of stopping Bologna. Brescia loses 4-0 to Torino. Brescia is one of those teams that actually they play nice, but cannot get the results. Inter has a hard time getting past Verona 2-1, and Napoli's uh, downfall continues. Nil, nil only. Uh, Napoli had one of the worst... Since they beat Salzburg, uh, in Salzburg, they are absolutely atrocious. They cannot find the goal anymore. Anything but is Cagliari. 5-2 over Fiorentina. They were 5-0 up, had chances to make it 6. Uh, they are really, really good this season. Uh, which is actually nice to... You know, I know they make all the negative headlines, blah, 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 with uh, racy chanting, but I actually like it when Cagliari is good. I have a colleague who is from um, Cagliari, and I can see how he is beaming uh, that Cagliari is doing so well. I'm always saying I'm very happy uh, for you. Lazio 4-2 over Lecce, Sampdoria Atalanta. That one might have been the game that I watched. Glad, I'm glad I didn't. Uh, nil nil as is Udine Spal. Parma gets 2 nil over Roma, and yeah, I talked about Juve Milan. Milan with the best performance, but no where, no points. Again, they cannot find the goal, and they're sloppy in defending. It's just uh, a big pity what's happening at Milan, to be honest. Um, if we look at the table, I mean, a hard time for me to look. You were in the clear of the rest, and they are not playing great, but they're getting the job done, both teams, and you got to applaud for that. Lazio and Cagliari with 24 points are now in the Champions League spots. Atalanta and Roma with 22. Napoli and those four, and then Napoli loses touch. And I think that Angelotti might not survive the Christmas break. Maybe there's a coach for Milan. Who knows? So Napoli 19, Parma 17, Fiorentina 16, Hellas 15, Torino 14, Udine 14, Sassuolo 13, Milan 13, Bologna 12. If I am benevolent, I would say here is where the relegation zone starts. Lecce 10, Genoa 9, Sampdoria 9, Spal 8, Brescia 7. <sighs> I am. I have some fear for Milan, to be honest. If you look at the 538 rankings, uh, Juve is the big favorite to make it, but Inter is hanging in there and is quite clear on the second place. Napoli still is giving only 3% chance, but is uh, also favorite for the third spot, and then Lazio ahead of Roma. Atalanta also has, has a chance. They don't give much chances to Cagliari. Now, for relegation, it starts at Fiorentina, really. Milan is given, uh, is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth place? Yeah, that would be great if they can finish in ninth. Uh, let's see where, where they will finally end up. But the uh, really relegation threatened teams is Verona, Udine, Sampdoria, Genoa, Lecce, Brescia, and Spal uh, with the last three. Probably be the ones that are going down, but let's see where this is going. In France, for, unfortunately, I didn't see anything of France, although there were quite some nice games in there, especially on Sunday. But, uh, you know, Liverpool, Man City, that's all I'm saying. And my two favorite teams playing, one good, one bad. Nice Bordeaux ends 1-1. That was an interesting Friday evening uh, game. Brest loses at home to PSG. PSG getting a last-minute winner. Strasbourg nim 4-1. Lille only 0-0 nil, nil against Metz. Monaco gets another win, 1-0. Uh, Sancher ends 0-0. Nil, nil. Rennes gets back to the winning streak, 3-1 over Amiens. Uh, Montpellier 3-0 over Toulouse. Nantes loses home 2-3 to saint Etienne And Marseille 2-1 over Lyon. So the two uh, Olympics getting there. This now means that the two big boys are on top. PSG 30 and Marseille is second with 22 points. Angers has 21. Saint-Étienne, another huge team, is also up there 21. Lille has 19, Maupier has 19 and Bordeaux has 19. As does Reims and not. It is so super tight. I have a French colleague and we're always saying, I mean, every week we can only see how super tight everything is in France. Look, uh, PSG, 10 points down, uh, you're at 20, this is the top four. And then you look at the bottom, 11, 21, it's between the fourth 
and last is this equidistant. Uh, so we have Lille, Montpellier, Bordeaux, Reims, Nord uh, with 19, Rennes, Monaco with 18, Brest, Nice with 17. It is crazy. Um, Lyon 16, Amiens 16, Strasbourg 15, Metz 13, then Dijon 12, Toulouse 12, and Nîmes 11. It is crazy how tight the French league is. Uh, it actually makes for quite some interesting matches. I mean, almost any match that you see is an important one. If you look now at the standings, yes, PSG 98% wins the leagues, and that's not so surprised. What I'm surprised is that they give Lyon still a 33% chance to qualify for the Champions League. Uh, I think this will be falling soon. Uh, Marseille 29%, Lille 25%, Angers 20% to make for the Champions League. I'm not going to go through else, but look, even Marseille has a small chance of being relegated. And uh, just look at the distribution for the positions, except for PSG, everything is flat, flat, flat. Where does the relegation zone start? The Cognac 538. Brest 21%, Nîmes 28%, Metz 32%. To lose 35%, Dijon 36%. This is the tightest league in Europe. I'm saying as as it is. If there wasn't PSG, we would be talking about probably the best league in Europe to watch this season. And I should, I absolutely should watch more league. Uh, it's just I'm so hung up on the other leagues, to be honest, um, that I rarely ever get to. Uh, in Russia. I'm not gonna run through much through the results. Um, Zenit uh, wins 1 0 over Arsenal Tula with Krasnodar and Lokomotiv 1 uh, 1. That probably was a pretty good game. Uh, if you look at the standings, we have uh, Zenit um, pretty clear on top, and Lokomotiv second. Rostov is in third. CSK's case uh, also with 30 points is Krasnodar. Then there's the cut, and I think for the last Europa League spot, there's probably a fight. From Spartak Moscow to, yeah, can even go to relegation playoffs. I mean, there it is really tight. Spartak Moscow is only four points above the relegation zone. Uh, Rubin Kazan is in there. If you look at the chances, um, Zenit seems to be the odds awesome on favorite to win uh, the Russian Premier League. Krasnodar, Lokomotiv, and CSK have only small chances. Uh, who makes it in the, in the Champions League? Yeah, Krasnodar, Lokomotiv, uh, CSK, take a pick, it's almost a coin flip. Rostov has very, very small chances for relegation. We talk Tambov, Kazan, Ahmad Gorozny, and Sochi. Uh, but, you know, I usually look in Russia more towards the top level. But the distributions for every position are quite telling here. Uh, in Portugal, we also had a uh, big derby uh, at the last was Porto winning over Boa Vista. Uh, we had Family Cow only making a 3 3 more Renze, Benfica though winning at Santa Clara, and also sporting 2 0 over Belenense as a small uh, Lisbon derby. And if you look here now at the standings, it is Benfica two points clear of Porto. Family Cow now came a little bit down. Sporting comes a little bit up. So Sporting was in really bad shape. I have to say Lusk probably resurrected them. Um, Gimares, there's already a cut. I have to say Gimares, Rio Ave, Boavista, uh, Tondela, Braga. I thought that Braga is a much better team. This is kind of where it is. Um, it's also relatively tight up until, yeah, the last three are not so tight anymore. Uh, if you look at the chances, uh, Benfica and Porto, it's as always a co uh, coin flip. Those two will qualify. Sporting is given an outside chance to get in there, I would say. So two, family car, 1% making Champions League, but having no relegation troubles. That's uh, where you have Desportivo Aves, uh, Passos Ferreira, Maritimo, Belenenses. Those are the teams that we talk about relegation. Uh, Belgium, Anderlecht gets them in last weekend, uh, but and uh, Club Rouge is losing to Antwerp and Genk loses at home to Ghent. So those are, I think, the big results in uh, Belgium. I'm looking for Standard also losing to Mechelen, so uh, that means the top stays relatively close together. Uh, but Ghent is now moving in there. Uh, Club Rouge still ahead of the rest. Uh, st uh, then Ghent, Standard and Mechelen uh, kind of close ish uh, Charleroi and Antwerp are currently now in the playoffs and the rest, yeah, we have to see where this is going. Um, 
it seems to me that those six will make it. Let's see what 538 is saying. Uh, to win Club Rouge is the clear favorite also to make it into the Champions League. Uh, Ghent, Standard and Genk are the ones that uh, have uh, other chances to either qualify for Champions League or even win. But I think Club Rouge is the clear favorite here. Anderlecht mm, doesn't look all that great to be honest. But they uh, the big giants are uh, rebuilding. Uh, in the Netherlands, another team that had a horrible, horrible uh, late, 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 late beginning of November is uh, PSV Eindhoven, who lose again to Willem Twe. Uh, now Ajax wins 4-0 over Utrecht, uh, Feyenoord 3-2 over Walwijk and Alkmaar 3-0 uh, over Emmen. So in the table, we have Ajax pretty clear on top, six points ahead of Alkmaar, PSV remaining pretty constant, 24 points, and you are afraid that they might uh, drop further. And I have to say, it's actually quite tight there. They are the playoff spots for the um, uh, Europa League, Utrecht, Vitesse, Willem Dewe, and Heracles, they're all with, within three points of PSV. And Herrenveen is also with 21, and Feyenoord only 20. So yeah, there is a chance that PSV makes a deep fall and they have the two big um, Marlin is injured and is, so is Bergwijn and as in, ever since that happened PSV is not getting the results so let's see where this will end up if we look now in the uh, chances I mean with PSV dropping off so much it's now all Ajax I mean it was a lot closer before I think still Ajax had had a 70 to 80 percent chance uh, Go back to, to the video. Uh, Al Alkmaar, very small chance of making second, but a really awesome favorite for second. PSV is still awesome favorite for third, but let's see. I, there might be some cleansing happening. Uh, namely, I think that Mark von Bommel might be ousted. I think Mark von Bommel would make, would fit to Bayern actually quite well. Uh, then we are going to the Ukraine, uh, a league that I have not covered much because they were not really the great uh, matchups. But this weekend it was Shakhtar against Dynamo Kiev, 1 0 for Shakhtar. Uh, teams that we had in Europe is Worskla, which loses um, away from home uh, 2 0 to Lviv, and Alexandria at Olympic Donetsk. If you look at the table there, and here I don't have chances, but Shakhtar is pretty clear ahead of Zorya, then Desna, and then Dynamo Kiev. But Sh it's all Shakhtar, and then the rest is kind of dropping off. Alexandria 24, Mariupol 17. I think the, only this last playoff spot. Is still uh, up for grabs. A similar system, I, I guess, in, is as in Austria. Lebanon, if they also split the points like in Austria, which I find an absolute crazy system. And then we are in Turkey, where also big upheaval happened. Uh, up until recently, we had Alanya Spor in top place. They lose one nil to Trabzon. Uh, Bejiktas gets a win one nil. Um, let's see, Fenerbahce gets a win over three two over Kars in Passa. And Galatasaray is 2-0 uh, at Gaziantep, but neither of them gets the top spot. The top spot is going to Sivaspor, who beats Konyaspor 2-0. <laughs> so if you look at the table, and it's really a crazy table also in Turkey. The top in Turkey is absolutely, every, any, anything can happen there. Sivaspor 21, Fenerbahce 20, Trabzon 19, Alanya 19 and Bajakshi here 19 as is Galatasaray so they're all in striking distance of each other within two points the top six uh, within seven you can add uh, Yeni Malatiaspor and Bejiktas then there's a little bit drop off so on top in Turkey it's really really tight uh, chances as you see it's very even but Galatasaray is still given the best chance of winning uh, the Super League, Bajakshi here is second, and then Fenerbahce, Trabzonspor, and Bejiktas probably in there as well. On to Austria we go. Um, we will see there's a big separation. Austria win gets a rare win. The steering derby between Sturm Graz and Hartburg ends 3 1. Lask wins 1 0, and in a great game, Wolfsburg and Salzburg. Uh, Wolfsburg has the chance, Salzburg makes a goal, namely Haaland gets a 3-0 win. So we have Salzburg 38, Lask 35, big drop then. Wolfsburg, I think they're still the third best team. Rapid, Sturm, 
those are safe, hardback also look safe. And I think Austria has a chance, but not a big one, to make it into the Champions League playoffs. So if you look here, Salzburg will win it 90%. But Lask is given 10 to 10 percent makes me proud, but they will finish in second place. And then Wolfsburg, Rapid. I don't think that Austria Vienna will get in there, to be honest. Now from now on, we'll spend a little bit less time um, in the Czech Republic. Slavia is the big team, win 3-0 over Teplic. Victoria Pilsen 4-1 over Slovan, uh, Slavia dominates the league 44, then 33 for Pilsen and Boleslav and Japonets currently make it into the Europa League. Maybe there's a slight chance for Sparta Praha in uh, Denmark also. Yeah, uh, we have uh, the uh, mid Jylland 4-1 over Copenhagen. That's a big result. That was also top of the table clash. mid Jylland now clear on top of the table. Brøndby is hanging in there as well. If we move further uh, to Greece, it's also a two-way race. Pauk beating OFI from Crete and Olympiakos 2-0 over Atromitus. Panathinaikos winning a derby against Ajax, that is a big result, I would say, as well. And if you look here, as I said, it's a tours race. Pauk had one draw, uh, Olympiakos more. Olympiakos is on top. Ajax and OFI are close. Uh, but I think it's similar to Italy. Two big teams battling and the rest uh, is probably fighting for Europa League qualification. It's not necessarily super close. I think Panathinaikos might have a hard chance making it to Europa League. Um, in Serbia, just Red Star is dropping points and Partizan uh, wins 3-0. Uh, Red Star still holding on. Vojvodina is actually second. Chucha Ricci is uh, third and Partizan only fourth. Then there's a little bit drop off. Uh, and that is almost it. We had the last one is Croatia, of course, where the two big ones, Hajduk 3-2 over Osijek and Rijeka loses 5-0 to Dinamo Zagreb. It's Zagreb ahead of Hajduk and then the rest in Croatia. This ends now the run through the top leagues very quickly. We have not talked about Copa Libertadores. In the first legs we had River against Boca. Again those two meeting. Tunil had River and then Grêmio Flamengo 1-1. The return legs. Boca only manages a 1-0. Cannot get over the line. Flamengo annihilates Grêmio. So we have at the end of this month the big final. And now it's played in Lima because of protests in Chile, Flamengo, River Plate. I think it's actually a pretty great looking final. I have to do a jersey review for that one too. And then the last thing I want to show you was the 5.38 quotes uh, chances for the Champions League. Who is winning it? Manchester City, 26%, 50% Bayern Munich, Liverpool, 14%. I would say at the moment Liverpool is the strongest team in Europe, but that's what they are saying. Not PSG and Barcelona, Real Madrid are all under 10%, as is Juventus. Juventus is equal to Chelsea. More surprisingly, though, is that Salzburg are the awesome favorites to win the Europa League ahead of Manchester United and Sevilla. That I would not have expected. And if you go all the way down, my team Lusk is given a 1% chance of making it to the final. But they're the awesome favorite now to qualify from the group. I promised a long video. It is a long video, half an hour. But uh, lots of information in there. Hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll talk to you soon during the international break. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.